Howdy guys, Nintendo Capri Sun here, and welcome back to Let's Play Nino Cooney. Are you guys ready to make some money? Well, I hope so, because I'm going to show you something new. In fact, something that, um... Jeez, let's just do it. So, travel. Remember how when we went to the past, we went up to the Tombstone Trail? But we haven't seen what that place looks like in the present. Well... Sorry to disappoint you, it doesn't really look that different. However, we did meet some skeletons there in the past that said they were working on something. And they said within a couple of decades it would probably be done. Well, it just so happens, I'm gonna go and save my game here real quick. Yes. Hope I don't screw this up. I don't see how I could, but then again, you never really know. So we're gonna come through here, and we'll just take a look at this. Uh, what does that say? It looks like a casino. It looks like K5 Casino. I don't know. To welcome to the creep casino. We sure you'll have the time of your death. Hey, look! It's the friendly skeleton who gave us that key, ain't it? Oh, you remember me? What an honor! So you really built a casino, huh? That's really neat. Whoa, thank you! It certainly is the greatest achievement of my death so far. I hope you enjoy all it has to offer. But first, a few pointers. We have four types of games here. The Crypt, Blackjack, Platoon, and Double Cross. Playing these games wins you chips, and chips can be exchanged for some rare and magnificent prizes. Some of them are so rare, in fact, it cannot be acquired anywhere else. Alright, I think that's everything. Now go ahead, have fun! Die a little! <laughs> Oh my gosh. This place is spooky as hell. How can a skeleton be fat? How can a skeleton have boobs? How can a skeleton be wriggling those boobs? Winning big on the slots is all about using one's items at the right time. I'm... Sh wow, how can a skeleton be hot? Ah, how about that? Hey, two blackjacks in a row. Hello. You know, my favorite game's always been Platoon. It's not like having a bishop and a wizard in your hand at the same time. Such a kick. Oh, do we need spirit medium here? I'm surprised you don't need it for all these guys, actually, because that would more make sense. So, of course, can you imagine having to cast that to talk to every single person in here? Who would have thought the dead have such fabulous facilities? Perhaps dying isn't the end of the world after all. Well, it would be a nice thought, wouldn't it? Let's, uh, talk to you, then, shall we? Spirit medium. What you got to say? Hoping to win big, are you? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm just here to pass the time, personally. I do have plenty of it, after all. You sure do, missus. You sure do. Paul, I'm the cashier. If you want to exchange good cash for chips or chips for prizes, I'm your man. So here's the thing. You can buy chips to play in a casino, but you can't turn around and cash those chips back in for money. You can change the chips in for prizes, and then in turn, <clears throat> take those prizes back to a store somewhere and sell them for real money. So in a roundabout way, you can make money. Um, let's see, how much? I don't know, I don't want to get too much here. It's maybe 500 or so. As you can see, that, I mean, that goes pretty quickly. No, we're quitting. I've already bought enough. Thank you, ha ha ha. You're welcome. You wish to try your luck on the slots, do you? Then I must advise you to choose your machine with utmost care. Some machines drop chips as though there were no tomorrow, while others refuse to give even a sniff of a prize. Mwahaha. -ha -ha. Man, this looks like... It looks cool, whatever it is. What are you doing? Hello there, I'm the witch in charge of Double Cross. Uh, no. I've, I've never played Double Cross, so I'm not sure how it works exactly. Well, what is this? Hey, you're not allowed to film in the casino. You wish to try your luck on the slots, do you? Oh, I already talked to you. What about you? Ah, another fine haul. Tis much easier than pillaging, that's for sure. Well, let's see, I don't know which one of these... Like, you think I would have looked this up, but I'm pretty sure. 
pretty sure for the most part they're all a waste of time. But I'll show you some a little bit. So you can play like nine different ways. And uh and hopefully you get something. If you don't, then what I usually do is just keep raising the bet until I do win. So like I'll get twenty. Nope, so I'll raise it to thirty. So that way when I finally do hit something, you know, then it's guaranteed to be fairly big. So yeah, the 130, yeah, it's not a huge deal, but. Boom, boom, boom. Now there are like power-ups and stuff that you can get. That either like slow the slots down or make certain ones uh I don't know. It's hard to explain. Uh yes. Now, I might go into more of that later, I don't know. It's it's pretty fun though. <laughs> it's fun to just sit there and mess around with it. But the game that you can really I'm just gonna go and get straight to the point here. The game that where you can really rack up chips on is this one. Platoon. And I'll kind of explain how... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So you put in 200 chips as you advance. Now she's gonna hand us a couple of cards here. Now we have to make units out of these cards. So here's the thing, basically. You're gonna form five units. And the idea is that it's going to put one of your units against one of hers. And whoever has the higher total number in their unit basically wins that hand. And you want to win three out of five. Now the catch is, if you have a king, you automatically win no matter what they have. But if you have a bishop, you always lose, except for if they have a king. So the bishop is like the only thing that can beat a king. Otherwise, a bishop always loses. So if you have a bishop, you should put it by itself. And then... We'll probably just... I don't know. Probably just put a three... No, 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 I didn't want to do that. Put that over there. And then we're basically going to make like three awesome hands here. Do so like 18, 17... 17, 20, and 23. Yeah, that's a do. Predict a victor. I think 23 is probably going to be the victor. So, yeah. Two arms! Ah, she goes first. Okay, so now she's going to pick one of hers and one of mine. But neither of us will be able to see until the cards actually come out what they are. Now, it turns out I won that one because, well, I had more than she did. Now, if she had had a king, she would have beat me, but, you know, even if her even if her total was less than mine, the king always wins. So I got a bishop here. Holy jeez, my door just opened. Hang on a second, I gotta go shut that. Holy crap, that scared the crap out of me. You know what I'm actually thinking? I might not want to do this. Because the bishop's guaranteed to lose against anything except a king. The thing you gotta keep in mind, though, is that the AI in this game is really weird. Um, basically, the AI always arranges their bishops and stuff over here. And, like, jokers and stuff. Now, if there's a joker, it'll actually switch your hand with theirs. So you could also play a bishop and hope that she has a joker, which would switch the deck so that she has the bishop and she automatically loses. Otherwise, probably... And then, like, what she'll do is she'll put her lowest cards over here. So if I choose, like, this one, it's probably going to be numbers. And then... Nah, that's shit. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd cancelled the bishop, but I guess I hadn't. Whatever. What's she going to do? Okay, that worked out. <laughs> I'm not bothered. This is far from over. Well, let's just see about that then, shall we? Your turn. Think carefully before you pick. Welcome. Well, I could go with the 23, but I tell you, I think I almost have to. Just hope she doesn't have a king here. Okay. That's it. I did it. It's a 3 out of 5, and that means I basically won the whole hand. 
Looks like your prediction was right. I lost on purpose, you know. Yeah, whatever. Do you want to keep playing with your current winnings? That's a new stake. Now, see, right now, now, I've all of a sudden... I have, um... Do I have 301 or do I have 900? Because basically, if I play again, I can play as if I was betting 900. And it's like, why wouldn't you want to do that? Because, holy crap, I mean... <laughs> Anyway, that number goes up really fast, to the point that like, I like it. Like, I like within like if you win three hands in a row, you basically come out with about forty thousand chips. If you win four hands in a row, I don't even want to imagine. And yet again, we find ourselves at three campaigns, one in a row, and can we make it four? Let us find out. It's all in the heart of the cards, baby. Let me see. Oh, uh, this does not look too good. I don't have a single king or a joker here. I put the bishop by itself. That's not... I mean, I don't know. I have to hope that she has a king, if that's going to do any good at all. Otherwise, man, there's a lot of low cards here, too. I'm just going to have to throw it all into, like, two awesome hands and hope maybe... Yeah, because I don't know what else... I mean, the only other thing you can really do is, like, make little low hands like this and then hope that she has a joker where it'll, where it'll switch him up, you know? But otherwise, it's going to take a lot of major luck to pull this off. Uh, I'm thinking maybe she has a king right here. Alright, it's a good thing I'm picking first, so we can really kind of go from the... shoot from the hip here. I'm going to throw out the three up against uh, this right here, and just see what happens. Oh crap, that was my prediction. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that, what the hell. Well, maybe I, maybe I should have predicted the bishop, I don't know. Okay, well I was definitely going to win with that one, most for the most part. But I'm glad she didn't pick like one of her bishop hands to go up against that or something. Well, I predicted that the bishop would win, so should I go and try and see if she doesn't have that king there? I think I'm almost better off doing that, and then hoping she doesn't pick my 27. So I could pick my 27 against those three up there. Or I could just take the victory now. Huh. So either way, she's going to end up having to go up against... ...something, but... <laughs> The question is, what exactly? I think I'm gonna go with what's certain here and take this. Yeah. Because at least I know that way it gets me two out of the first three. Or two out of the first... Well, yeah, two out of the first two. That's gonna be... Oh, that wasn't a king. So it's actually a good thing I didn't do that then. So now the question is... Do I use the bishop or the three? If I use the bishop and she turns out to have a king, then I win. But if I use the three and she turns out to have a king, I lose. On the other hand, if I use the three and she happens to have a bishop, then I win. But if she has a bishop and a joker, that's the other thing. Maybe she has just a joker. Because sometimes she does that. I don't know, man. This is really... I'm tripping balls here. I don't know which... I really honestly don't know which one gives me better odds here. I'm thinking since I predicted this one, maybe I should just go with this one. And hope she has the Joker. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Because you're basically hoping for the same thing anyway. Yes! That did it! Oh, man, I can't believe it. Deary me, that was careless. Careless indeed. Yeah, she did get a prediction right, but... 13,000. You know what? I'm actually going to take that. We don't need to abuse the living crap out of this or anything. But 13,000 is a pretty good haul, considering... You know, what those are fundamentally worth. So here's the thing. When you go to claim prizes here... You can see that some of the prizes aren't available yet. They will become available as the game progresses. But, as you can see, we got like... Holy jeez. Um, Ten-man ticket. Idler ticket. Interesting. 
Some Medal of Agility, that's pretty nice. And of course these here, and you can get crown berries here too, which is interesting. Didn't know you could get those here. That's not a bad deal if I do say so myself. And you can get a weapon here if you want, and you can get this thing. Which we already know, that sells for six grand at the store. So anytime you want to, you can just come in here and... So you pretty much gamble your ass off. And since there's a save point right outside, you pretty much never have to cut your losses. But, you know, the fastest way you're going to make money is on that game that I was just showing you. So, and this, I mean, this is a good weapon. It's not that much better than what we had before. But I'll go ahead and get it, just for the sake of it. Thank you, mwahaha, indeed. So then we put it on our little Purloiner guy. He has the Black Blight now. And that ups his attack to 148. From whatever it was before. I don't even know what he had before. Well, it doesn't matter that much. It's more than it was, I'll tell you that much. So if I had a few more, you know, if I had a few more chips, I might actually go ahead and go for some more stuff. But I might just do that off screen. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much you guys would really want to watch me, you know, st I mean, playing in a casino is like, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's not one of those things that, I mean, if it's real life, that's one thing, like when I was playing Plants vs. Zombies that time, but still. But either way, it's a nice little side diversion, it's something you can do to, uh, you know, just to mess around, more or less, if you want to do that. So what I'm going to do, oh, you can't use that here, yeah, <laughs> whoopsie. I don't think I've ever actually traveled, like, to the top of this place to see what's there. Like, where the boss used to be, you know? Because you really wouldn't have a reason to do that. So anyway, if you want to get to your ship really fast, the best way to do that is to warp your castaway cove. Because it takes your ship with you. So you just warp to a town that's right near the sea like this. Because if I warped to Alma Moon, I would have to travel all the way down here you know, by foot, just to get to my ship. There's one more interesting thing to note. And this is one of those things I could just tell you. But instead, I think it better just to demonstrate it. So, off to see we go. And this video will be over pretty soon. I, sp I must have spent like 30 minutes in that casino just trying to get as far as I did with that game. Because I don't know, man. They just... I don't know. I... have I wasn't playing it right or something, and for some reason, the cards just weren't on my side. Either that, or I just, like I said, I could have just had my strategy all messed up. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to grab this draw point while I'm here. I love this music here, by the way. You don't really get to hear this very much in the game. You know, because you're just like... I'm kind of like hunting for little invisible treasures, because I'm not sure... <laughs> I didn't really look up on the map to see like where they were, if there were any on this island. The thing is, if there were, I might have picked them up already, actually. But otherwise, I don't know, I thought it was worth a look. It was worth a little bit of a scour there, just to see. But the question that I think is really important is not how does this change Castlevania. The question is... Whatever. Meteorite Fragment. So we're going to enter the cave here. I don't think you have to enter the cave, I don't know if it matters, but... um, Enter and then leave again. And now, if I'm not mistaken, when you go to travel and look in your list... Huh. It's not there. I thought maybe... Okay, I thought the Hermit's Shell was supposed to show up as a travel destination. And that you could actually travel here. 
if you want to. I don't, maybe maybe that only occurs after you've done all the side quests here. I don't know. I haven't really done any of them. Now you recognize this guy, don't you? <laughs> you might not have recognized him before. Maybe you do now. Hey there, Mr. Potty. I haven't managed to capture your toilet yet. This is so beautiful down here. I wish I could, like... It reminds me of Mar... Wait a minute, there's a treasure chest down there. What the heck? Can Swain get that? Let me see. Wait a minute. See, unless I'm going crazy, I'm pretty sure I see one there. Oh, there we go. Okay, alright, um... Get it? I had no idea that was there. Healing tier gem, how about that? Well, it's good to have that now. Now, we still don't have the power to open these yet. You see, Morningstar is not yet powerful enough to open this chest. So, once you get the three stones, it will be. So, spoilers, but, you know, they already told us there were three stones. Basically, you know that there's a certain level of power it has to reach. That sure is going to be nice when we are able to open those, I'll tell you that. I was really hoping this would turn into a draw point, or a travel point. Just for the simple fact. The Temple of Trials is one now, isn't it? Oh, I didn't know about that. They did tell us that the Temple of Trials, there's new stuff to do there too now. So that'll be worth looking into eventually. It's like Castaway Cove is, is that town. It's just that one town that you can always count on to just go to. And it's there for you. And you get to wear your swimming trunks while you're there. And you get to pick up free treasures. It's always loads of fun. Just gotta love this place. Alright, so next time on Nino Kuni, uh, I reckon we'll do some more exploring. So, otherwise, I gotta go ahead and get this thing. Is my internet up yet? Oh, it's up! The internet's back up, yay! Okay, so, thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time. Here on Let's Play Nino Kuni. Bye, guys.